Alright, chapter 10. So this is going to be a short video because only section 10.1 is going to be on your exam. For section 10.1, we're going to focus on the different types of muscle, the functions of them, looking at different structural elements including connective tissues, as well as looking at different functional groups. So how these muscles work together. So there's three types of muscle tissue going back to our tissues chapter in chapter 5. So we have our skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. So still knowing that your skeletal is the only one that's able to be consciously controlled by your brain. So only type that you can take your brain and tell it to move. So the specialized purpose of muscle is to convert the chemical energy in ATP into the mechanical energy of motion. So in order to power up the actual muscle contraction, you need ATP. So you're going to break that ATP bond between the third and second phosphate group. And then that energy that is released is used as part of the process of causing a contraction. So we'll cover that in the next chapter. So for our muscle, we have different levels of structure and organization. Each of these levels have their own connective tissue that wraps around them. So starting at the smallest, we have a myofiber. So this is our individual muscle fiber cell. So the connective tissue that wraps around it is endomycium. So think endo as an inside, kind of make everything as tiny as possible. So just around the individual cell. We take a couple of those cells and we bundle them up and we form a fascicle. So a fascicle is wrapped in perimycium. So kind of like a little perimeter around the group of muscle cells. Around an entire muscle, we have the epimycium, so think epic as in something that is very large or big. So that is the connective tissue wrapping around muscle. So some of our muscles work together and they form a muscle compartment. So the connective tissue wrapping around it is called fascia. And then lastly, between our muscle compartments, so for example, in certain areas of the body, you do have multiple mul multiple muscle compartments that are in the same area but they don't have the same jobs and so separating between them we have intermuscular septa which is a thicker form of fascia. So to see this in picture form this has everything everything except for the septa. So we have down here at the bottom our muscle cell our individual muscle fiber that is wrapped by our endomycium. We take a couple of those cells and we wrap them together and the wrapping around it is perimycium, so wrapping around a fascicle. Even bigger, our whole muscle wrapped together in a epimycium. And then around our muscle compartments is a fascia. So I'm actually going to go to the next slide. So in this transverse cut across the calf muscle, so we have our tibia and our fibula there. We have three, four different muscle compartment groups. So our pink group here, orange, green, and blue. So what wraps around these muscle compartments, we have our fascia. And then in between, so for example, in between this pink and this orange, this thicker portion, we have a intermuscular septa. Same thing in between our other muscle groups. Lastly, we have our functional groups of muscles. So with our muscles, some of them work together to perform the same type of job. Some muscle groups work against each other, so they'll have the opposite type of movement. And then some muscles aren't really there to create movement, but they're to actually just keep things stable. So at top we have a prime mover. So this is our agonist. So this is the muscle that's going to do the main job of a particular type of movement. So for example, your prime mover of respiration is your diaphragm. 
So helping out your diaphragm in our example is synergist muscles. So these would be muscles in your chest that help to increase the volume of your lungs so make your thoracic cage or chest area larger and that's going to allow you to be able to breathe better. So that would decrease your, by increasing the volume in your lungs, you're increasing, let me say that again. By increasing the volume of your lungs, you're decreasing the pressure inside your lungs and it causes air to move down its pressure gradient and go into the lungs. So that helps your body be able to breathe. So when you make a big, deep breath, those extra muscles are really helping to cause that movement of air. Same situation when you're breathing out. If you take those synergist muscles and help to compress your chest, making your lungs, your thoracic chest area smaller, that makes the pressure inside them even greater than on the outside. And so air is going to move down its pressure gradient out of the lungs. Next functional group is an antagonist. So this is going to oppose the movement of your prime mover. So it's going to just move in the opposite direction. So some of your muscles are actually in pairs to do opposite type of movement. And I'll show you an example of this in a second. And the last one is a fixator. So this is a muscle that prevents movement. So it just helps keep stuff stable. All right, so a... An example of an antagonistic muscle pair. So looking at our upper arm region. So we have two different sets of muscles. We have the biceps brachii and brachialis muscles are synergistic to each other. So they're going to cause the arm to move in the same direction. So here we have our biceps brachii muscle, the big thick one and the brachialis. So when we are causing our arm to flex and move in this type of direction, it's actually the brachialis that is doing the main motion for causing that flex. The biceps brachii just helps it to move in that direction. On the opposite side we have our triceps muscles. So they're going to cause the arm to move in the opposite direction. So our biceps muscles and brachialis moving in the flexing this direction, your triceps moving your arm in the other direction. So when one is contracting and causing movement, the other is having to relax in order to lengthen and allow for that movement. So they're antagonistic to each other. And that's the last thing that is on your exam for chapter 10.